Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 7th, 2017. First up, this was sent in by my friend Joseph L. This is from PBS Space Time, hosted by Matt O'Dowd, talking about, it's, good, it's a good video, and as usual, I have all the links down below in the description to everything that I'm talking about today. They're talking about, in this PBS Space Time episode, the fact that as you want bigger and bigger space telescopes, you have to get bigger and bigger lenses or bigger and bigger mirrors unless you go with a certain type of um, space telescope that you can develop that uses the way light interferes with itself. You have interference waves, you have destructive interference waves, and you have additive interference waves that actually helps um, amplify the light. A good representation of what this is talking about would be something like a Fresnel lens, um, the same size Fresnel lens, like say if it's about two feet by two feet, to have the same large glass lens do the same exact thing without using the interference patterns, you would have to have a huge heavy lens. And like everything else, weight costs money to launch into outer space. And you also have effects too of the weight of the lenses and the mirrors themselves affect the clarity and the ability to keep themselves aligned precisely, just the weight itself tugging at these devices as they get larger and larger. So. The new thing may be using this type of a, a flat panel, and as you can see on this one too, if you can see the picture when you watch the video, it uses a different type of interference pattern than some of them I've seen in the past. Some of them actually have little slots cut in a disc-shaped thing to where you can use for, um, you can even use it for antennas too, for radio waves. You can use interference uh, type of flat antennas. So this is just taking the same principle and using it in a different way. So if you get a chance, check this out. And then next up from the Washington Post, scientist just discovered the first brainless animal that sleeps. It was well past midnight when Michael Abrams, Claire Bedbrook, and Ravi Nath crept into the Caltech lab where they were keeping their jellyfish. Yeah, this is about jellyfish. So, um, Because jellyfish does not have a centralized brain, it just kind of has a spread out nervous system. They weren't really sure, but these students decided, hey, give it a shot and see if they could actually detect some type of pattern that was similar to sleep. And with these jellyfish, they actually did that. Um, it all started when uh, as a graduate student in neurobiology overheard um, Nath and Abrams mulling the question over coffee. The topic was weird enough to make, their stop, make them stop at the table and argue. Of course not, she said. Scientists will know, still don't know fully why animals need to snooze, but research has found that sleep is a complex behavior associated with Miller memory consolidation and REM cycles in the brain. Jellyfish are so primitive they don't even have a brain. How could they possibly share this mysterious trait? So, um, yeah, just by, just by observing them, they would actually go into periods to where they would mimic some of the same characteristics that mammals have when they sleep. So sleep may have been something that uh, was a predecessor even to uh, mammals uh, and uh, uh, more advanced life on Earth. So if you get a chance to check that out, and third thing I got here too, this is about the LIGO experiment. If you uh, have kept up with the LIGO experiment, I've talked about that I think at least twice on the TDD report about LIGO. Uh, the three people that are involved, Kip Thorne, Barry Barish, and Rainier Weiss, uh, it was announced on the 3rd of October that they received the Nobel Prize for the LIGO experiment. So uh, great going to them. And I think this thing, this is like the first generation it's a, a laser interferometer. You've got two lasers pointed at perpendicular directions. Here, I'll show you the picture right here. They're in perpendicular directions, and they're so precisely aligned that they can detect a difference in uh, space itself expanding or contracting, even if it's like less than the width of a single atom. And I think this last one they detected was like something like half the width of an atom. So, yeah, you're talking about very, very precise measurements there. But I think this is really something that's going to be useful in the future, possibly for lots of different things like um, space exploration halfway across the universe. You can detect things from farther away than optical telescopes or probably almost any other type of telescope uh, other than maybe radio telescopes and depending on the strength of the signal. Uh, we could also maybe use it for some form of communication. Um, I think it's something myself, I was kind of thinking, you know, we use these uh, things that shoot sound waves or uh, seismic waves into the ground and then we catch the return signal and are able to detect things in the ground even though we can't see them with the uh, regular um, optical waves. I think gravitational waves may be something like that too and they're even talking about theoretically if there are 
things outside our universe or multiverses or anything like that, gravitational waves, may be the way to detect these things. So, good going, guys. And uh, finally, I'm going to talk about something. And let me turn the camera a little bit here so you can see a little better. Let me readjust the camera. I am going to be working on a little experiment here. And hopefully I'll be in the shot with this. I don't know. Hopefully I'll be in the shot. But what I'm going to work on myself is a little home type of experiment. I've always wanted to um, do indoor growing, but I don't like things that are complicated. I, I like things that are simple and cheap. So I will put up a link. There is a guy on here that has done a video about this too, and I will put his, uh, his channel and the link to the video that he did where he just says all you need really is just some uh, solo cups, um, which cost me all of three bucks. Um, some potting soil, which cost me another three bucks for this thing of potting soil, and about five bucks worth of seed. And I'm going to try to grow my own lettuce. This is a giant type of romaine lettuce, and supposedly this guy says it is so easy to do. You don't need anything fancy, no grow lights, no other things, just the cups. Set them in a window. You want to get direct light, but not. Um, you don't want to have the sun shining on them a lot because lettuce, if it gets too hot, it doesn't do really well for lettuce. But if you put them in a bright southern exposure window, that's supposedly enough light and uh, from looking at other videos it seems like as long as you give them a good five to six hours of bright light during the day lettuce does just fine so rather than go through all the stuff of showing you putting dirt in the cups and then putting the seeds in and stuff like that I'm just going to skip past that part get that done and then week by week as I do my TDD report if there's anything new or noticeable I'll let you know if anything uh, works really good I'll let you know if anything fails I'll let you know uh, who knows, this could be a, a failure of an experiment and I just give up on it in a week or two. Or it co could come out really good. But I'll see if I can actually grow my own lettuce. And the purpose that I got started on this was the fact that it's so hard to preserve lettuce and the quality of lettuce I've been seeing in the store lately has not been great. Basically, the stuff does not stay fresh for very long. I don't think it's a really good bargain for what you get for your money. So I'm thinking, why, why the heck not grow your own? At least that way, if uh, supposedly you can do this all winter long in a sunny window, uh, why not have fresh lettuce? Then at least I know the quality that I'm getting because I'm the one that's growing it. So we'll keep track of it week by week and see what it goes. It'll, it'll either uh, work out really good or not or somewhere in between, and I will let you guys know step by step. So I encourage everybody to do little home experiments like this. You never know what's going to happen. So that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.